Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm just going to give um, some brief experiences regarding associating with crazy saints. Well, Brother Glover, what is a crazy saint? Well, a crazy saint is a saint that's crazy. <laughs> that's about the best way I can explain it. Or better yet, I can say that now, this is just my personal opinion. I believe these people really love the Lord, but many of them are full of religious demons. That's about the best way I guess I can explain it. You know what I mean? They, uh, down through the years, I have met quite a few crazy saints, and I'm just going to give you some experiences of some of the things I've come across. I mean, from church, uh, relatives, uh, uh, friends, uh, people in the church environment. Now, I'm going to go back quite a few years uh, because uh, I can get up close and personal, but I'm just going to go back now. A good example, I'm going to just give you an overall example. Sometimes you can tell a crazy say by just look at them. Because they have a tendency, many of them will have a tendency to dress uniquely uh, without going into detail, but you could you could tell how they dress. They kind of dress weird, and I'm not talking about just, you know, just, you know, just a standard of decency. You know, they just, many times these people dress to try to make you think they are super spiritual. But, uh, and also, you have a lot of crazy saints that will cuss their parents out in the morning. And that afternoon, they'll go out and preach on a, in a street corner, fix meals, and give them to the poor. And <laughs> I'm serious. Now, let me give you some examples. Back in... Uh, 90, had to be the middle nineties, nineties. I was working at a bookstore, a Christian bookstore, and two women came in the bookstore, and one of them was dressed normally. the The other one, well, she had a the the the, the first lady was dressed in kind of like a, a pantsuit outfit. The other lady was dressed in a, uh, I guess, a, you got these uh, black shirts and it shows a white collar indicating that this person is a minister. That's how the other lady was dressed. And she had on a long dress on, you know, like a jean denim dress that, that, that went almost down to the floor. That's what she had on black shirt with a white collar in it, indicating that she was a preacher. And like I said, the other lady was dressed in, well, you know, female pantsuit, blouse. So I walked over to them and introduced myself. Hello, I'm Mr. Glover. Uh, are there any kind of books that you're interested in? And they said, yes, we are looking uh, for some different types of books. And one of the books they uh, want to looking at was uh, on worship. So we began to talk about worship and all of a sudden they began to tell me how they understood what worship was really all about and they began to talk to me telling me that they were chanting like they did in the New Testament and whatever. And I noticed that every time I talked to them about a particular subject they were trying to impress me with a deeper revelation on that particular subject. And as I was talking to them, I noticed that all of a sudden my insides just began to turn. And I began to feel a very oppressive spirit from them. And I'm wondering what's going on, but as I began to talk to them more, I realized that both of these women were severely demonically oppressed. They were. Every time I talked to them about something, they had a deeper 
stranger revelation on, on, on it. I was just trying to sell them a book. I wasn't really interested in, in their revelations. Well, anyway, after they left the uh, bookstore, people in the bookstore also commented on their weirdness. I mean, I'm the one that talked to these ladies. But the people that were in the bookstore felt or sensed a real strong, ungodly vibe from both of them. Now, also, one of the ladies, the lady with the collar on, told me that she was the pastor of a church here in this city. And I thought, my God, this woman pastors people? And I can't go into the detail about what they said because I forgot, but they were strange. Some of the stuff they told me was just outlandish. And both of these women were strongly demonically oppressed. And I, and I thought, if she's passing the church, I feel sorry <laughs> for those church members. Now I'm going to give another testimony regarding a sister in Christ that I met in 76. A young woman, well, she was older than me, really. She was, I mean, I'm 26 at that time. This sister was in her early, maybe middle, early 50s. You know, a, a single woman that loved the Lord. And I always, when I was younger, I had a tendency to meet with, you know, and talk to older women that loved the Lord. They were maturing the things of God. I noticed that, I mean, from Sister Lane, you don't know, and another sister in Christ, Sister Ralph, and some other sisters. I mean, I, I could, I never did really talk to men, older men, and about the things of God. It was always older women. And so I went over to her apartment one day just to talk to her regarding some things of the Lord. And uh, as I was talking to her, all of a sudden, you know, just about, you know, just not so much a scripture, just some general things. You know, I'm, I'm a young man, she's an older woman in Christ. I think she was single, though. She wasn't married. You know, I just wanted some wisdom for her. From her. Next thing I know, she's going into the realm of the Spirit. You know, I mean, <laughs> see, my background is Pentecostal charismatic, so I mean, so. Anyway, I, I'm talking to this woman, and all of a sudden, she's in the, in the Spirit. And, and I'm trying to talk to her, and she's, I mean, just all of a sudden, she's in the rim of the spirit. I mean, I talk to her. We can talk about the weather. The winds of God is moving or whatever. And I'm just trying, I'm trying to, you know, talk to her. Immediately, she's in the, in the, in heaven, I guess. I don't know where she is. And I'm trying to talk, and and all of a sudden, she, he come, ba 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 He come, ba ha. He come in a Honda. Ooh, let, praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, ba 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 ba. And so I just have to sit there and listen to ha 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 ba ba ha na na ma. He come, ba 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 ba. That's all I can do is just sit and watch her and listen. I can't do nothing else. I mean, she's in the realm of the spirit. And I noticed every time I went over to our house, hey, ba -ba 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 he come in a Honda. Hey, hey, he come in a Chevrolet. I mean, she was, it was, it was always she would get in the, in the spirit. She was a nice lady. <laughs> she was a real nice lady, but I mean, I, I, it puzzled me. <laughs> it really did. I just, uh, you know, I just, I, I just had to wait till she come down from heaven back to earth in order to converse with her. <laughs> okay, but anyway, she ended up married, and I lost contact with her. Now, one more situation, but I think I might give one or two more. I, I met a young man. This was in '76. No, I'm sorry, 78. The woman was in 76. This young man I met in 78. 
And I don't know exactly how I met him. He seemed to be a very religious young man that loved the Lord. And and we would get we would go to church different services together on occasion. But as I began to talk to him, I noticed there was something really weird about him. I couldn't put my finger on it, but I noticed he was just you know just a little bit strange. Went over to his apartment one day. And I went into the kitchen as I looked up. This young man had scriptures written all over the walls. On the walls. You know, scriptures written on the walls. And I thought that was kind of weird. You know, I, I'm an artist. I'm a retired artist myself. I, if I want to put scriptures on the wall, I would write it on a big piece of paper. And pinned up on the wall. This young man had scriptures written all over the wall. And as I began to, you know, listen to him talk, he said some strange things that really didn't make sense to me. Really didn't. I remember him telling me that he didn't really want to marry a black woman because he was a young black man like me. And he was going to marry a white woman because of such and such characteristic or whatever. I don't remember exactly what he said. And I'm thinking in my head, who would want to marry you? Because you're kind of crazy. You know? <laughs> anyway, I invited him to my church. Now, this church was a charismatic church that I had found in 77. It was an all-white church now. I explained that in a previous testimony. I was myself and another young black girl was the only one that uh, joined that particular church. But this is the church that God sent me to before he called me to preach. So I invited him to my church and he was standing in a row behind me. Now we were up, standing up in worship, praising the Lord. The pastor's wife was the uh, director of music or the minister of music. So we were standing up with our hands lifted up in worship. And we were just praising the Lord, you know, praising the Lord. Oh, Lord, we love you. Everybody in the church, we just, I had my eyes closed. Everybody had our eyes closed. And we were just worshiping the Lord and praising the Lord, and all of a sudden behind me, I heard, <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, what's going on? We just praise the Lord, hallelujah, we worship you, oh Lord, we worship you, we praise you, hallelujah, we just, people were praising the Lord, some were singing in, in tongues, and behind me, And everybody, we didn't stop. We just kept on worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Bah, galileo, bah. And, and we're thinking, I'm thinking in my mind, what's going on? What, what's, what's happening? We worship you and all, <laughs> behind me. <laughs> and <laughs> I almost stopped to look to see who it was. And I realized it was my friend that I had invited to church. We worshiping, everybody worshiping. And all of a sudden, Everybody all at once kicked it up higher. Hallelujah, Buck Oyota. We worship you, oh Lord, we worship you. And all of a sudden behind us, <laughs> we sang it all about anything, boy. <laughs> and the woman that was uh, standing beside him said, What's going on? Because <laughs> it was just. The demon, it was an evil spirit through the young man was just, it was a religious demon, unfortunately. Do it, I guess, I'm sure it was, just roaring like a lion. And we just, hallelujah, we praise you, oh Lord, and it was a Then, it just stopped. And we just stopped praising the Lord, and we just went into another song. This young man was full of, Really, it was religious demons, to be honest. Remember now, the scripture talks about another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit. <laughs> now, that was two years before I started casting out devils. I knew about it, but I really didn't uh, know how to cast out devils at that time. Now, the lady that was standing next to him, I'm sure <laughs> she moved. <laughs> Now, I don't know what happened because I don't remember. It's been a while. I don't know if the pastor ever talked to him, messed with him, or what. I don't know. And plus, I kind of lost contact with him 
as time went on. But that's just a few <laughs> examples of crazy saints that I've been across through these years. I can give you some more examples, but I think that's enough. God bless.